guys already know this, but I have to start with this first step. First question we want to ask, who do we know? Right? First question, who do we know? I know you guys do this. You bring people in. Hey, who, who, who are the people you know? Okay? But that's the first step. Who do you know? I call this the wedding principle. Right? When we're helping small business owners, we're helping people in the vice business, we say, look, sit down, act like you're you know, having a wedding, and who are the top two, 300 people that you would invite to that wedding? All right? Now, if you're, if you're a guy and you don't really know who that be, and you say, well, you know, I'm going to go ask my girlfriend, honey, if we were to get married, who would we invite? Okay, stop right there. Don't do that. <laughs> Men, do not go to your girlfriends. Girlfriends, do not go to your boyfriends and say, hypothetically, if we got married, who would we invite? I'm just telling you from uh, some feedback I've gotten from the audience. It doesn't go very well here. But that's the wedding principle, all right? Now, that's step one. Who do you know? Now, here's where a lot of people don't get it or where a lot of people go wrong. Here's step two. Who do I know who knows who I want to know? Who do I know who knows who I want to know? Okay? Guys, this is powerful stuff. I have made a lot of money because of the people I've come to know. There was a point in my life when I, I basically lost it all, and I was, I was very young. And I moved from Oregon to Arizona uh, with a couple of roommates, and they never really got jobs, and they didn't get it, you know, they didn't make any money. So about two months later, we were booted out, all right? And they said, well, I'm going back to Oregon. And I said, no, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna stay, I'm gonna stick it out. It's Arizona, it's August, I'm from Oregon, I got a Jeep, I got no top, I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do this. So I put everything I had into a storage unit. And I got a membership at the YMCA, and then I went and camped out on the Gila River, and then I would go to the YMCA, I would take a shower, and then I would go to work. And I did this for a couple weeks. And then I learned something that I probably would have learned if I stayed in school, and it's something called monsoon season. And I learned about monsoon season as my Jeep parked in an area that said flash floods. And with no top on my Jeep, one night I experienced what appeared to be the ocean coming from the sky. And I joke, but uh, it, was, it was really humbling. And uh, I just had a police officer out there earlier, and he said, hey, look, you know, you want to stay up off the ground. There's snakes or scorpions, things like that, but luckily he didn't, he didn't make me leave. So here I am in the back of this Jeep. I'm getting poured on, and I'm just, I'm so humbled. I'm so heartbroken that I'm, you know, I'm, I'm literally praying. I'm like, you know, what do I do? And I'm, and I'm not going to go through the whole personal experience. I, I know everybody has their stories, and so I'm not going to bore you with mine, but I'll tell you one thing that became really crystal clear to me is I had to surround myself with people that brought out the best of me. And it, it just sunk into my mind and into my soul and just anchored into my heart that I had to find people. As a matter of fact, when I met my wife, one of the top reasons why I wanted to marry her is because she made me want to be a, a better man, a better guy. We've got to have those people in our life. When people have me on radio shows or TV or things like that, people say, David, if you could just tell me one thing, one thing, what would it be? I would say, you've got to surround yourself with really successful people. You know, there's, there's an expression, there's a saying, there's a law that you can take your five closest friends, your associates you hang out with, and you are the average income of the rest of them. You just divide out their income, and that's, that's about what you make. Right? Now, I'm not saying <clears throat> that we need to chase rich people in our lives. What I am saying is we got to find people that bring out the best in us, that want us to be better. Okay? we got to surround ourselves with people. So we got to ask, who do we know? we got to ask ourselves, who do we know that knows who we want to know? There was a point in time that one of the people on my list was Jay Conrad Levinson. I love Jay Conrad Levinson. I love what he accomplished. I loved all the ads he did. And so... I started asking people, do you know Jay? Do you know Jay? Do you know Jay? Finally, I met a guy named Jeff Leesner and said, I don't know Jay, but I know Todd, and Todd works with Jay. And so Jeff introduced me to Jay. I started giving, serving, and sharing with Todd, and I made Todd a fan. And eventually, Todd introduced me to Jay. And about a couple months later, I was speaking on stage with Jay Levinson in August of about 2008. Okay? 
about six years later of being in the rain, now I'm on stage with Jay Levinson. Now I did this with a lot of people, but I did this with Jay. In May of the following year, I was made CEO of Gorilla Marketing. We published our first book together. All by asking, who do I know? And who do I know who knows who I want to know? Because guys, we want warm leads. Now I promised I would tell you how to get more leads than you can ever handle. Are you ready for this? Okay, you're gonna wanna write some of this stuff down because there's gonna, gonna be some things I say that you're gonna wanna use word for word. And I'll repeat them again and I'll, I'll give them to you, okay? Hey.